Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori. Let's see those smiles. Let's see those objects. I'm the PhD Antiques Appraiser. It's good to be with you. Everything's unscripted. I don't know what objects my guests will show me tonight. And thanks so much for being with me. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. My guests are here from all over. Let's see what they've got. Let's see some smiles. Let's see some excitement. Let's see what you got. <laughs> What have you got? Well, I'm looking at birds. They might be a sculpture of birds. Not really sure. I'm looking at big fingernails. Somebody's got some big fingernails. <laughs> Somebody just had a manicure. Let's see. Then there's this that could be a bracelet, the way it's being held. Kind of looks like a bracelet uh, with that. And then there is some glass and a box that looks like it's metal. And I'm going with the bracelet. I think it's a bracelet. Looks like it's gold. Could be plated. Let's take a look. Hi, Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, I'm good. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Lori from Alabama. Hi, Lori. So is this a bracelet? And it seems yes. to have multiple strands. Yes, it's a bracelet and it doesn't come off. You just, uh, it's like a bangle. You just put it right through. So you just put your wrist right through. You get your wrist in there. And if you have a chubby wrist like mine, you just keep working it <laughs> until right. it gets through there, right? Okay. That's what okay. I did. I tried to get it through my wrist. I have a big I didn't arm. mean yours. I meant mine. Mine so, too. A couple things, sweetie. Is it marked in any way? It says 14 karat, 14K Italy. Does it? It does. Excellent. All right. Now, other, another question. How'd you acquire it? A Goodwill Blue Box. Wow. Excellent. So you paid what? $39, $49 for the Goodwill Blue 49. Box? 49 Got all kinds of stuff. Don't go, oh, 49. Oh, yeah. it's so much money. Come on. You get a but lot I, of stuff out of those I, Yeah, bucks. this was my big find in it. Yeah, you had a big, big fine, like a $1,250 fine. You betcha. That piece marked Italy, 14 karat gold. That piece is solid, and it's got some nice, what are Baroque pearls. So those pearls are not cultured pearls. They're Baroque pearls. They're very nice. I love the design. I like the fact that that, that bracelet is modern, but very, very good quality. That's what yes. I like about it. Wow. That's beautiful. Yes. And it's marked on that band on that straight right. Band, right? right here. That's right, what right it is. Wow. Good for you. 1250 right out of the shoot. I like it. Man. Thank you. You're welcome. Wear it in good health. I like I it. <laughs> that's nice. Why gold finest marks. I teach you about the finest marks here. You can watch all the videos. And if you're, you know, and if you're not finding the videos, I'm looking for videos on jewelry. Please use the binge link. It is not difficult. You can use pay playlists. My staff has done a lot of work to put this stuff together for you. So it's easy for you to get to the videos. You don't have a video on jewelry. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so please uh, take a look, you know, click around and you will find it. But the binge link is the easiest way to do it. All right. Let's see. Well, if you're writing a letter or doing something else, <laughs> you know, what were you doing, sweetheart? I'm trying to read on this. It's Are you trying to read what's on the bottom? You know what you need to read what's on the bottom? The loop. Get the loop out. All right, let's see what else is here. We've got an egg. We've got uh, what looks like a brooch. And we've got this metal box. Let's take a look at this metal box. Looks like it's, a, it's better than a trinket box. Uh, so you've got a metal box. You open it up with that nice hardware. You know, the hardware and the hand-hammered aluminum is really, uh, the hand-hammered um, copper is really nice. Hi, what's your name, hon? My name is Cheryl. Hi, Dr. Lori. How are you today? Hi, Cheryl. Thanks so much for asking. I'm just fine, thank you. So um, how'd you acquire this? I got it at an antique store several years ago for $15. Okay. I, and I collected copper at the time, so it was just kind of part well, of the collection that I wanted. You know, copper and brass in the 80s and early 90s are really big. You know, it's making a revival of sorts but it has to be pretty good pieces. That's a pretty nice piece and a pretty old piece. That piece is early 20th century. I like it quite well. So how much do you think you paid for it? $15. Oh, I remember. Sorry. You yep. might have said that. You might have sure. said that. I no, that's okay. I would say value on that piece about 90 today. So you went from wow. 15 to 90 is really quite nice. I think it is uh, made in, in England or Northern Europe. I don't think it's an American piece. And question for you on it, what is it for? Because it's got the holes on the bottom. So I've always been intrigued. I, I never knew what it was for. And I saw soap boxes and cricket boxes, but I just wasn't sure what it was. No, I don't think it's a cricket box. I think typically what people mostly use that particular piece for foot warmers. Sometimes you'll oh. see something hot going in it. 
A lot of people use it that way. The fact that it has a handle indicates that it's mobile and that it's going to be moved from room to room. That's why typically that form is a foot warmer type of form. I do like very much the, the um, hardware in the front. And I want to just point out that the hardware on the front, not the handle you're holding, but that front hardware is probably replacement. Probably oh, not the same really? time period. That's probably a little bit younger than the rest of the piece. Gotcha. Well, thank nice you very you. much. My nice pleasure. You. My pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. No problem. So um, those are the types of questions that people, you know, ask me here on Ask Dr. Lori Live and on video calls. And of course, you can always do a video call with me. Uh, they're easy to book right on my website. Oh, guests are here. Guests are here. Let's see. What have they got? So there are these birds. <laughs> All right. I don't know. The birds are okay. They kind of look like they are a composite material. And then I have, you know what's tripping me up with this one? She's in a beautiful dining room, but it's hard for me to see with the reflection of the glass behind her. So maybe if you can just put it on the, that's it, put it on the other side of you. Switch hands. There you go. That's a little bit better. Let's talk about that piece of glass. So it looks like it is uh, going to have two of them on a buffet table. And then there's the top. Hi, what's your name, hon? Hello, my name is Rita. Hi, Rita. Where are you calling from? Florida. Well, that's a nice piece with a very typical 18th century form on, uh, on it. So that figure is very 18th century, very Rococo uh, from the 1750s and such. Do you have two of those or just one? Just one. Just one. How'd you acquire it, Rita? I got it at Salvation Army. How much did you pay for it? Four dollars. Will you please take the lid off and put it somewhere safe? There you go. And I like the fact that, of course, the lid actually will have, uh, it will secure from the inside, so it'll sit right inside, doesn't move. And anytime you're doing with lids, you want to kind of shake it a little bit. If you're at the Salvation Army or the Goodwill or the thrift store or the art sale, shake it a little bit and make sure it really is a good fit. Can I see um, the bottom, the bottom pedestal? Yeah, that's right. The bottom pedestal and the base. All right, that's nice. Is it marked at all? No marks at all. Pieces French, it probably comes in through New Orleans, or New Orleans, as one of my friends who lives there says. Um, I would say time period for it is probably the 1920s, looking back at the 1750s. That's very typical, the Rococo revival. And I would say value on that piece in today's market, about $75 for one. I wish you had two. My pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank and you. thank you all for showing your support of the channel. Any way that you show your appreciation, of course, super chats and super stickers or buying a t-shirt or whatever it might be. So thank you for doing that. Sharing is also important. And so is watching, being with us and watching, of course, the videos. All right. We've got a piece that looks like it's some glass on top of some other glass. Not sure about what that is. I can't really see it very well. I love the smiles. It's good to see you smiling. <laughs> Had a good day. What is this blue piece? It's kind of blue and small, but you're very, very far away from your camera, so I'm having a hard time seeing it. Nope, can't really see that piece very well. Oh! Okay, I got to go with the egg, because it's the one that I can see the best. So either you got to get closer to your camera, you got to turn on the lights, make sure you have a nice plain background. That helps me, too. Oh, all right. How'd you acquire this? Were you in um, parts of Scandinavia or Eastern Europe? I wish. No, all right. I wish. I got it at an online auction and it came in a lot of like 25 trinket type statues and just things. And I just opened it like an hour ago. So, you opened it an hour ago and then you got to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, was going to try to get on your show anyway, but I wasn't sure what I was going to show you. And okay. this one. Okay, so is there a mark on the bottom? Is it is it marked in Cerulic, for example? It's marked in something that I have no idea what it is. Okay, so that's marked in cerulic, it looks like. It's a little bit difficult to tell with the with some of the glare. And then it looks like there is a folktale image on the body of the piece. Yes, there's this. Stay there, stay there. Don't go moving around, just stay there. So okay. folk art imagery, hand-painted on black lacquer in the form of an egg, typically get, brings us to Scandinavia, parts, of course, of um, the former Soviet Union and such. I would say value on that piece, piece dates to the 1980s. I would say value on that piece, about $95 retail. All these values are based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold recently. They're not list prices where pieces are just sitting at ridiculously high numbers. These are prices where pieces have, these are values where pieces have actually sold. Thanks so much. Thank you. My pleasure.
So remember, when you're looking at that, usually that image on the body, if it's that type of piece, is usually representative of a scene from a folk tale or a very famous story. Uh, those eggs are typically didactic. They're trying to teach little kids who don't yet know how to read uh, the famous stories of a particular culture. So great, cool, fun. Right out of the box and right to Ask Dr. Lori Live. That's fun. Let's see what we've got. Guests from all over. Oh, good. We moved a little bit closer to the camera. That helps me. And then we have what looks like some tiles. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's take, a, let's take a look at the tiles. Okay. The blue, piece, the blue piece, we might be able to see. She got a little closer. That was good. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Your, your uh, connection's not great, Kim. Oh, I like the frogs. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but okay. you know. All right. Let's see. So how'd you acquire those? Uh, I got them at an auction. I actually got a box of, there are six in the box for $10. Beautiful. Are they marked in any way? They are. Uh, after a couple of months, I figured out, I think, that it's Newcomb uh, College. Can you see that? That you have Newcomb College Pottery Tiles. Now, tiles in general are very, very important. And Newcomb College, of course, very well-known American art pottery People look for it all the time. And here's where the big numbers start. They're about $400 a tile. You've got six? Yes, they're all, the, the two are frogs, but the okay. other four are each different. And I brought the two frogs because they seem like they're in different stages. This, well, sorry, this tile here has the last coating on it, which is sort of iridescent. And the crackle, if you can see that, this one appears to be one stage before that. And so the other four each are different, a leaf and three different animals. And some look like they're totally completed, like the iridescent and some. Early 20th century art, American art pottery tiles, um, both of them $400 for each one. And really? then the other ones, depending on their condition, their interest in, of course, the, the pattern and such, but Newcomb piece is really high. I've seen them go as high as 750. Yours are not that detailed to be $750 versions. They're worth about $400 each. How much did you pay for six? $10. Plus $10. I got a whole bunch of Puebic tiles with them. $10 to make uh, almost $2,500. $2,400 for six is pretty darn good if they're all the same. But those two are $800. So even if it's just, you know, that for those two, you did great. Good for I you. I love you, Dr. Lori. I have one question. So yep. you suggest selling them as a set six or separate? Oh, I know you usually no, see separate. no, no, do not sell those as a set. No, individual tile. Some people will get, of course, a, a table easel and they'll just put it up, you know, as decoration, as a work of art in and of itself. Some yeah. people will utilize them as tiles should be utilized, right? right. So it all depends. No, no, those are not considered a set. Just because you got them together doesn't mean they're a set. Yeah, right. those yeah. particular pieces all have individual artwork. They're individual works of art. Yes, they're the same pattern, but they're not a set. So right. I like those a lot. Um, I do too. I hate to get rid of them. Well, if you can <laughs> keep them, great. Right. If, if you're gonna, if you can keep them, you're building your own collection, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, the value is really beautiful, and they're beautiful. Why? Major work of art, very well known, good condition, good for you. <laughs> Stick with me. I'll teach you how to succeed. You know, she's finding great stuff. So are all of you. My guests are here. It's great to be with all of you. <laughs> Hi, your camera has to be horizontal. Please make sure that your camera's horizontal. Make sure that we've got, um, again, a nice, good, clear uh, vi visual on your object. Let's take a look at this brooch. It looks like it has many different colored gemstones on it. And it's somewhat oval. And it seems like it's on either a piece of towel paper or a piece of writing paper. Hi, what's your name? I'm Eileen. Hi, Eileen. How are you? Where are you tonight? I'm in Pots or Oneonta, New York. Oneonta, New York. Okay. So tell me a little bit about this piece and have you tested these particular stones with the Presidium Gemstone Tester? No, I got the diamond tester, but I know there's no diamonds. Uh, but it's it just says made in Austria on the back. So and we believe they're Austrian crystals. Yeah, it said just as made in Austria. Get close and let's look at those prongs. Stay right there. Don't move. 
All right. First of all, those are sometimes called dog tooth or wolf tooth prongs. So those prongs are set. You'll notice the big Austrian crystals have four of them. The smaller ones have four of them too, but they go all the way in and they basically quote unquote bite onto the, onto the, what would be faux gemstones or the Austrian crystals. Okay. Contact is moving. So hold on people. It has to do with, I've been there. <laughs> it's mascara. It's a pain in the neck. The mask, the makeup is a whole thing, you know, <laughs> anyway. So those hound tooth or, or a uh, dog tooth prongs, that's the gold pieces are basically holding in those Austrian crystals. Now you'll notice how they catch the light pretty well. Right. And on the back, it says made in Austria. And that's the only mark. Correct. Correct. All right. Um, value oh, time period for this piece. That piece could date between the 1960s and the early 1980s. I would say value on that piece in today's market about $75. Okay. And it's a nice piece. How much did you pay for it? Uh, $3 at a yard sale. $3 works good. Very well. There you go. Based on actual sales records. If you see another one, pick it up. <laughs> I sure will. Thank you, Dr. Laura. You're the best. You're welcome. Yeah, that's a nice piece as well. Why? The the vari the variation of color in the Austrian crystals. And Austrian crystals are a lot better than just your general piece of glass, for example. So that's a nice piece too. And again, if you see these pieces at a yard sale, uh, you want to pick them up if you can. Uh, and that's what you're saying. Oh, okay. she never tricked me and she picked the same people multiple times. Oh, Amanda is complaining to Janet because I'm rude. Well, if I'm rude and you don't want to watch and you think that I'm not picking you for some reason, then leave. I don't know what else to say to this because basically I want you all to get a chance, but you need to, of course, you know, have, an, have good, a good, of course, connection, a nice clear background. The object has to be something that, of course, we're looking to so I can educate people about it. But no, I'm not trying to be rude. No, I'm not trying to ignore you. And no, I don't choose people multiple, multiple times. It's who's available in the room so that, that we can choose from. So if you're not one of the people available in the room with all systems go, then, you know, how am I going to choose you? But I understand if you have other things to do or you don't think that the, the information here is going to benefit you, even though I show you over and over again that, that it's that. Um, I understand that you've been on five times. Many people have been on much more than that. And some people have been on, you know, some people have been in the in the back room and not able to do it. I'm very sorry. And I don't know what else to say to you other than keep trying. I hope that you can do that. I hope that you can, of course, be part of it. And even though you're saying things like I'm rude, I would still choose you in the event that I have a good connection, right? And the object is something that I can teach somebody something from. That's basically what it is. So that's what you're saying. Um, as for the Presidium Gem Tester, I'm sorry, I do not control, you know, them having that, uh, how that gets bought or sold. I make recommendations. And of course, you know, you should keep trying with that as well. So I appreciate those of you who are, um, of course, understanding that, you know, this is not magic what we do here. So I, I appreciate that too. But I hope, I hope in fact that, uh, uh, is her name, her name's Amanda. I hope in fact, Amanda will try. I hope all of you will try because I'd like to see, of course, more of you be on, of course, uh, the show as well. And I'm glad that all of you participate. So, um, and I want to hear all of your comments, good, bad, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, so let's hear them all. Let's see what else we have. All right. So it looks like we have a glass that might be a perfume bottle. I'm not really sure of that, but that connection is very difficult for me to see. So Amanda, here's an example of someone who's getting on who I'm probably not choosing because there's not enough light and I can't really see that object. And if I can't see it, I'm not going to just pick it and then make a guess. I'm going to make sure it's right. So that's how I play. That's how I roll. That's how it goes. So that's an example. I have nothing against that person. I don't know that person, but you know, if I can't see it well and I can't do that, I'm not going to do it. Let's talk about the, the birds. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not crazy about the birds at first, at first look, but let me take a look. Let me take a closer look. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm doing well. How's my favorite PhD appraiser? <laughs> I'm probably the only PhD appraiser, you know, but yeah, I'm fine. Thank you for asking me, sweetheart. <laughs> I love to see some smiles and some happy, right? So, <laughs> That's it. Uh, back up a little bit for me. Let me see this deal. Okay. So, you know, there's probably pads on the underside. Looks like it's ceramic and it kind of sits on the TV table kind of thing, right? You're correct. <laughs> All right. And your bench link uh, caused me to buy this. My so binge this link caused you to buy this. Okay. Why? Tell everybody why. So this is from Continental Studios in Atlanta. <laughs> 
And my binge link was teaching you about what that all means, right? Correct. So show off, show everybody what you learned. <laughs> so this is marked on the back from 1977 from Continental Studios in Atlanta. Right. And I'm going to paraphrase here, but it was like an artist commune. Yeah, like a colony. Yep. Yep. And they just created their artwork and uh, some very famous artwork came out of there. So whenever you see Continental Studios and you can pick it up at a good price, pick it up. Usually a good idea to pick it up. Right. And don't forget my videos about the thrift store shopping list. Well, I tell you which things you should not miss at the thrift <laughs> store. That's a nice piece. Can I see the back? Show me the back. Um, the birds are growing on me. <laughs> you know, there you go. I've had a lot of cardinals around our offices this week. Yeah, nice. It's a nice, clear, stamped, of course, um, mark as well, which I like because then there's no fooling around of is it or isn't it. I like that. I'm going to say that that's a nice piece. I would say value on that particular piece. I would go as far as $100, $110 for that one. What'd you pay? I paid $8.99. For three birds. You for did very birds. well. I did do have get... one question, though. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, is that damage on his head? No, I don't think that's damage on the head. I think what that is, I think that actually happens in the process. Okay. So I, I don't think that's really, I don't think that's damage on the head. Because if you look at the other heads, they all look somewhat similar. Okay. They all have dark spots and light spots. You know, kind of like when, you know, my hairdresser is concentrating on something else. I get a little more light than I get dark. You know how it goes. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you. My pleasure. That's a nice piece. So for a couple of bucks, he picked up something. Why? Because he knew what to look for. That's what I'm trying to teach you, what to look for. Because then you're empowered. I want you to all succeed. You can do this. You can enjoy the shopping experience, the treasure hunting, and do this. If you want to resell it, you can resell it. If you want to keep it for yourself, if you want to keep it for cool gifts for your friends and family, whatever it might be. But it's a lot of fun, and I'm going to teach you the ropes. I've done this for more than 25 years. It's a lot of fun. So we've got this piece, and it looks like we've got some blurry on the camera with the, with the painting. I'm looking at what might be a cuckoo clock. I guess every clock like that is considered a cuckoo clock, if it cuckoos. And let's see. The camera, the camera is not horizontal, however. And then we've got that blue Asian-style object here. We've got that piece. And then we've got okay. this which looks like it is an art uh, an Art Nouveau piece, a very nice Art Nouveau piece, in fact. Let's take a look at the cuckoo clock, because lots of you have clocks. Now, don't get discouraged. <laughs> a lot of you are like, oh, no, she didn't pick me. Well, you know, <laughs> let's see. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine, sweetheart. Um, I need your camera to be horizontal if you can try it. Possible? Ah, that's my girl. All right. So now tell me a little bit about this. This particular clock, do, do, do the figures move? Is there a bird that comes yes. out of the door? Yes. And, and yes. Is, it in, is it in working condition? Yes, it will work. It will cuckoo. It will dance. Okay. And uh, did you purchase it in Germany? Uh, my parents did. My father was in Germany. Late, uh, late 1960s, 60s. and they brought two of them back, one for each of my grandmothers. Oh, well, that was nice. So you ended up with them, yeah. one for each grandmother, and they probably paid at the time somewhere close to $85, $95. At the time today, the clock is worth about $185. Great. And if I have a pair that are the same? If you have a what? I have two that are the same. I have a pair. Okay, I'm looking at one. I don't appraise things that I don't see in front of these eyes. Okay, I don't know about the other one, that I do, I, but I don't see it, so I can't. I can. I can't assume that what you're telling me and describing it for me is accurate. I have no way of real of saying that it's not accurate, but I, I don't. Course. I don't do that. that's cowboy appraising. I need to see it, and that's why I say a picture or whatever it is. You understand? If it is the same, however, yes. usually the value is close. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you so much. You're very yes. welcome. Where are, you, where, are you watch, where are you watching from, darling? Washington, Pennsylvania. I watch you on PTO every Tuesday. Oh, oh, oh my friends in Pittsburgh. I love it. <laughs> Thanks yes. so much. 
We have a lot of fun. We play uh, antique games, of course, uh, on Tuesday. And you can watch those videos because they're not shown here, uh, of course, uh, through the channel. You can watch those on the binge link and you won't miss a thing. You won't miss a thing. So you'll see what she stays there too. Hello, Brandon. Thank you for being a, uh, a supporter. And thank you, of course, for always being, being a positive influence on all of us. I appreciate all of you who enjoy the show. I'm glad you enjoy it. I'm glad that you enjoy the community of seeing what other people have and what they're, of course, looking at when they are um, showing me their stuff. So it looks like we've got an original graphite pencil drawing. That's a nice piece, an original artist. It looks like we've got a glass covered bowl. It looks like we've got a piece of a piece of uh, jewelry as well. I want to see some smiles. No one's smiling at me. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> and then there's another piece that that bowl is very confusing to me. I don't get it. It's like a bowl within a bowl within a bowl. Something's wrong there. Let's go with this uh, with this with this um, pin, and then maybe we'll see what we can figure out about that bowl, or 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 maybe the graphite drawing. Hi, Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm good, sweetheart. So where are you today? So I'm um, just north of Boston. Oh, north of Boston. Yay. <laughs> Next to Newburyport. Yeah. Oh, Newburyport. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I know that part of the world. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, and yeah. I love all of you. Don't think I don't love all of you. You're all saying I love Dr. Lori. I love all of you. I'm doing this for all of you. That's why I'm doing this. <laughs> all right. So that piece, is that piece marked, that brooch? I got to pull this down. We appreciate yeah. it. Yes. I found my first cremence. You found your first Cremens, okay. So Cremens, is, so Cremens is one of the, of course, um, uh, costume jewelry designers, very well known, very good. And you've got the box too, good for you. People in yeah. commercial increase value because you have the box. Where did you get it? A thrift store in Topsfield, actually. Okay, Topsfield, sure. So a thrift store. So it has, of course, some very nice glittering rhinestones. Those are nice. I like the heart because, you know, people like the heart shape. So that's popular. It has a yes. gold tone metal. It's costume jewelry. Uh, of course, if you look on my website at the research pages, you're going to learn a little bit more about a lot of different costume jewelry designers, right? And that I piece, that's how you, I knew the name. That's how you knew the that's name? Could you, because of how, how did you? From watching the videos. Good. I'm so glad. I'm yep. so glad. Yes. Yeah. How much did you pay? $10. Oh, very good. With the box? With the box. Excellent. You got, you got a not, you got a hundred dollar piece with the box. That includes the box. The box is like $10. I'd say 90 bucks for the pin and then another, another 10 for the box based on actual sales records in today's market. Remember markets fluctuate. So certain times of the year, pieces are going to be a little bit more valuable. When is the hard shape going to be most valuable? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. That's my girl. <laughs> there you go. You got to learn when to sell it too. I'll teach you that too. Good for you. Good for you. I like Excellent. it. I like it. Terrific. No, it is silver. It's appearing gold, but it's silver. Would that make a difference in appraisal? No, it will not make a difference in appraisal. That's going to be... Now, it would if we had 14 carat solid gold versus sterling silver. Yes, it would. But in this case, it doesn't. It is appearing silver. It is appearing gold. So you're saying it's all silver, Dr. Lori. So again, then that is a silver tone metal, right? The other yes, one yes. would have been, so I, I would say that it's going to be exactly the same. People would say, well, wait a minute, you know, gold is better than silver. Well, when it comes to costume jewelry, there are a lot of people who prefer, of course, silver to gold as well. So no, still going to be 110 with the box. Very good. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Appreciate nice it. to see you. My pleasure. Nice to see you. Um, so remember that, remember that it's, it's, un, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. I want to make one point about the question of the day and this thing about getting other objects appraised. I'm very happy to do a lot of them. I am not a machine. So people go, you could do more and you could do more and you can get more done. This is not a race. <laughs> you know, uh, the question of the day may come back. It depends on what I feel like doing one day or the next day. And again, when it comes down to, oh, she can get more appraisals in, I'm trying to teach you folks stuff and education takes time. So, you know, it's not like I'm trying to race through getting more in. I'm happy that you're happy, but don't be unhappy if I bring back the question of the day. I just want to give you a little heads up because I do change things up to keep it fun for me too. So let's see those smiles. Let's see those objects. Let's see what we've got. All right. So it looks like we've got a work matted and framed, work of art matted and framed. Looks like we've got this piece, which is an Art Nouveau piece, is is and we've and then we've got the um the graphite piece as well. The Art Nouveau piece, I would say, is a nice sculpture. So 
Um, tell me a little bit about that Art Nouveau sculpture. And then maybe if we have time, I, I would like to see about these other two. Okay. Um, Hi, what's your name? My name is Sandy McKee. Hi, Hi Sandy. So where are you calling from? And is that is that piece marked? I'm calling from Cambria, California, near okay. Hearst Castle. And it is marked E-T-A-I-N, 95% on the back. Okay. okay. And that's the only marking you have? No, there it says L-I-N-A, L-I-N-A, and then F-I-N. Okay. Oops, All right. How did you acquire it? Uh, my husband and I went to kind of an estate sale. He really wasn't open yet to the public. And we wandered through this packed house of his in Berkeley, California. And I saw this as Joe, my husband, was looking at other stuff. And I said, oh, I like that. How much and did you so, pay for it? $20. Do you all see the copper underneath? You know, like, what copper underneath? What are you talking about, Lori? When she holds it up no. this way, when we can see the bottom, you can see the red color, right? That red color coming through indicates that it is plated right? So it's silver plated over copper. Now, some of you are saying, I don't see it, Dr. Lurie. I don't see it. You know, these are educated eyeballs in museums and millionaires and all the places. So I, when I see, I've tried to explain what I see, but basically I'm seeing, of course, play, the plated piece. I would say that Art Nouveau piece is probably a piece that's going to be made in the Netherlands. And I would say value on the piece. It does not surprise me to have it near a big university town. Doesn't surprise me that it was in, you know, maybe a a staff or professor's uh, home yes. or the home of someone who enjoys the arts in a place like Berkeley. Doesn't Berkeley, surprise yeah. me at all. I would say value on that piece about five hundred and seventy-five to six hundred and fifty dollars retail oh, value good. for your twenty-dollar investment. Whatever your husband was looking at, who cares? Because you got the better <laughs> deal. <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks. Thank you, Doctor Lori. We appreciate you. My pleasure. I appreciate you. Um, Art Nouveau pieces, sinuous lines and lots of curves, beautiful figures. Oftentimes it's kind of like figures that are plants too, that kind of thing. So really quite nice, really quite nice pieces. Um, and of course, we want to look for those pieces that have some, of course, um, design elements, you know, so have some figural design elements. It looks like somebody took time in with respect to the design. I'm Dr. Lori. I enjoy the question of the day. Things we have in common are fun. I think things we have in common are fun too. Um, I, of course, think that the fact that we all love art, antiques, and collectibles is fun, <laughs> right? My guests, of course, have some fun stuff, and I love to hear where they found things and what they found. Don't forget there's a lot of information not only here uh, in the videos but also on the website. As I was saying, I'm Dr. Lori. I'll see you next time.